Hi, everybody. I'm Luther Lowe, head of public policy for YC. So uh, at YC, we're all about our founders. And so between each of these policy conversations, we're going to have uh, demos from our community. Uh, and so I'm going to hand it over to uh, Mike Noob from Sapier. We're going to sort of feature how some of uh, our community is using AI. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you, Gary and uh, Luther, for organizing this event and in, uh, inviting me to give a demo. I'm Mike. I'm one of the co-founders. Uh, and the head of AI at Zapier. And my personal mission is to pull forward the future so that more people can experience the extraordinary benefits of future technology today. Zapier is workflow automation software. We are used by millions of businesses across the United States. Uh, the vast majority of our customers are SMBs, so small, medium-sized businesses. Think like one to five uh, people companies. And I find automation can often be a little abstract to explain. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you all a quick demo of how Zapier automation and AI are working together to serve many of the businesses across the US. Uh, let's imagine you're an SMB. We're going to use, like, imagine you're a coffee shop. And you get hundreds of customer emails every week. And your team's responding to these emails. But you, as the manager, the owner, you want to try and get a summary. What are all, what's a good summary of all the things that people are writing about in about so that you can orient your attention and spend time improving your business? I know we have a lot of uh, policymakers and representatives in the room too. So maybe in your world, you can imagine you're getting hundreds of emails from constituents and you want to try and get that summary of what are the top things on everyone's mind so you can make be better informed and make better decisions about where you spend your time. So that's the problem. And this is a solution. This is a zap. It's what, our, what we call our automation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick this off by sending in a, an email to this like fake uh, email Dropbox that I set up for this like fake coffee business. Uh, hey, are you open during Memorial Day? And I'll hit send on this email. And let me talk through what Zapier does here. So this is a Zap that I set up uh, ahead of time. And it's going to, uh, Zapier is going to receive anybody who emails that, that uh, email. It's going to add it to a spreadsheet. Once we collect 100 emails in that spreadsheet, Zapier is going to release those and ask ChatGPT to create a summary and extract out insights from that. And then it's going to email me back a good summary of all of the things that I've collected so far. This is the, uh, the spreadsheet that I've got. I've got a bunch of uh, emails already in here that are sort of fake and representative. And there we can see my uh, email that I just sent got automatically added to the bottom. And if I flip back to my inbox, hopefully, there we go. Just got the summary back. And this is a live summary that was automatically generated using Zapier ChatGPT email back to be out. It looks like some order shipping issues, product quality concerns. Refund requests. Uh, all right, I got a lot to lot to work on for this business. So this is a good example. This is just one of the millions of things that folks use uh, Zapier for. Zapier supports those 7,000 integrations on our platform, and our users plug and play uh, those integrations to build things that they care about. One of the things that I've learned is that over the last couple of years is that AI and automation, I think, are synonymous in a lot of our users' minds. Um, the promise of both is software that just does more work for you. And I think this uh, insight was what led us to go in all in very early in AI. In fact, uh, Zapier went all in on AI. I personally did in the summer of 2022, almost six months before ChatGPT uh, was released. And Zapier is running about 10 million fully automated AI tasks per month at this point. And I think that makes Zapier the largest fully automated AI platform in the world at this point. And that usage has given us a front row seat into what are what's the promise of the technology? What are people trying to do with this stuff? And also, what are the fundamental limitations that they're running into? And what I'm seeing is this. The number one problem right now is low user trust. And that's due to low accuracy and low reliability of language models. And it seems, because we've been tracking this for a few years now, it seems those problems are not going away with scale. And this was my first hint that the underlying language model technology seems like it might be inherently limited. Now, of course, AI is getting faster, cheaper, and we have more model choice than ever, thanks to open source. But as I dug in, I found something really surprising. The AGI innovation environment in 2024 is incredibly weak. And I think very few people realize this. We're stalling out on our progress towards AGI. And I think this is highly surprising. It was to me because big tech, these AI labs, a lot of safety labs loudly promote this narrative that scale is all we need to reach AGI. Just plug in more training data, make the models bigger and we're going to get there. But this isn't true. Now, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, famously the show me state. So let me show you what I found that led me to believe that. This is a chart of uh, we put together of a bunch of the most popular AI benchmarks out there, all the blue lines. And you can see that uh, over time, over the last couple of years, progress towards human level performance has been accelerating on these to reach human performance. What I found is that there's one eval, one benchmark called ARC and it's the only world's only AGI eval that exists. In contrast to all of the other evals out there, it's the only one that actually measures AGI instead of the more narrow form of AI. 
This benchmark was introduced and created in 2019 on the before language models, before any of the advent of scale that we have today, it remains unbeaten today. Now you might be curious, like, okay, what's so special about this benchmark? So here's an example. This is uh, one of the 100 tasks, or a representative example of one of the 100 tasks that are in the benchmark. And your goal is to try and as a human figure out what's the pattern between the task input and the output, and then map it to the test. So in this case, you might, you know, see, okay, it looks like we're trying to do, you know, maybe fill in these uh, blocks with the square, with the dark blue, and we can check our answer. And there we go, confetti, we got it right. So uh, this is an example task. These tasks are designed to be incredibly straightforward and simple for humans. And yet, empirically, no AI system can solve these 100 tasks today. This is incredibly shocking to me. Now, ARC remains unbeaten, despite for the fact that two months ago, I launched ARC Prize, a million dollar competition to anybody who could get AI to beat this benchmark. And so far, no one has been able to. And that's on top of the last five years of evidence as well. In the past, AI innovation was driven through curiosity, through sharing, through exploring new ideas. And instead today, fueled in, I think, part by big tech and big AI labs self-interest, we now have scaling dogma. We have closed frontier research. We have LLMs as the only paradigm. ARC shows we need new ideas to discover AGI. I think the industry's misrepresentation of reality is distorting decisions by not only policymakers, but venture capitalists, by founders, by even students. There was $20 billion invested in LLM startups in 2023. By my count, only 100 million into AGI startups working on new ideas. Half the students that I meet don't wanna work on AGI because they think it's a solved problem. And policymakers are even now considering innovation rate limiters like SB 1047, because the scaling dogma is so loud. I wanna repeat, I think the AGI innovation environment we find ourselves in in 2024 is super weak. The world is basically betting that a single commercial lab in isolation is going to be the one to figure out and discover AGI. That is in direct contrast to how we got here and why I'm even standing in front of you. We got here through open progress, open science and open sharing. And that's not just true of AI, that's true of all science ever. In fact, I think if I'd go as far as to say, if you're someone in the audience who maybe thinks that we should pause AGI development or stop AGI development entirely, you should be pretty happy with the world that you find ourselves in in 2024. But if you care about reaping the benefits of AGI in our lifetime, like I do, we need to work to undistort this market. I think policy and incentives should push towards open AGI research and not rate limiting the crappy version of AI that we have today. Now I'm putting my money and time, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So I'm putting my time and personal money where my mouth is. I created ARC Prize with the express goal to provide a very public measure of progress or in reality, lack thereof towards AGI. And I hope ARC Prize can play a small role in motivating researchers to work once again on new ideas and openly share them and help steer AI policy away from regulatory capture and rate limits and back towards open innovation. Thank you.